Chicago and uh, uh, my thesis uh, talks about uh, LLMs and challenge. Uh, the two main objectives of the thesis, uh, um, the first one uh, is the automation of the, the monitoring of a chatbot, uh, customer assistant chatbot for uh, a major Italian insurance player. While the second objective was to increase the trustworthiness of the system from the stakeholder perspective. And because of this double objective structure, the thesis and the course, the presentation, has been divided into two main parts. One is more technical and addresses the first half, uh, the, the first objective, uh, while the second does a bit deeper into the philosophical application of the, uh, of the second objective. So uh, let me give you a bit more context. Uh, the first half of the, of the thesis refers to uh, the research and development internship that has been done uh, at Sprinter Live. And the, the company already had developed a, a one-step LLM to judge solution, employing GPT-42. But during the internship, uh, two main areas of improvement have been identified uh, to work on, uh, except uh, other than uh, improving just the performance. Uh, and these two, these two areas of improvement are the effective management of the real-world inputs, which are notoriously very uh, noisy, and the exploration of uh, open-source alternatives, uh, which uh, have been gaining out of uh, popularity recently, although the performance gap is still quite uh, significant. And the evaluation workflow works uh, uh, like the one you see at screen, where a user with some doubt goes to, go to, go to the website of uh, an insurance company and uh, some chatbot via a DAG system uh, provides uh, uh, the answers uh, retrieving the most relevant information uh, from the insurance uh, information sheet. And then uh, afterwards, asynchronously, the interaction between the user and the chatbot and the retrieved information are then forwarded to the judging system that provides a binary classification, positive or negative. And uh, in case of the in case of the negative uh, certification, uh, the instances are then uh, forwarded to some uh, human operators, human reviewers that, uh, uh, that uh, additionally review the, the instances to understand what improvements that the chatbot should have. This task can be generalized uh, in the task of uh, automatic text uh, evaluation, um, which can, in the state of the art, is addressed in three main ways. Uh, the first one is uh, with statistical methods, uh, more traditional ones that are based on uh, Statistical features such as word frequency or uh, end round count. And then we have model based methods, which are, as the, as the name suggests, uh, based on some machine learning model that have been uh, previously trained. And then uh, uh, it can be sucked back to machine, more classical uh, machine learning model, or uh, the recent, uh, more recent uh, models based on the transformer architecture. <coughs> and then we have hybrid methods, uh, which uh, try to combine the pairs of the previous two uh, categories. The thesis focused in particular on a, uh, on a family of model, which is called Prometheus, which came out uh, earlier last year, and which was uh, fine-tuned especially for the task of uh, automatic uh, text evaluation. To address the, uh, the task, uh, it has been proposed a, three, uh, a division of task approach um, with the three subtasks uh, that could be uh, addressed by uh, each one of them by a single component. Uh, the first one is a filter that, uh, whose job is uh, to understand uh, when a user question is uh, off topic or completely ununderstandable and thus uh, gets filtered out. The instance that uh, proceeds uh, arrives then to the main evaluation step, which is performed by Prometheus, uh, which gives uh, a three class classification to be either positive, negative, or unsure. In case of the unsure classification, the, the remaining instances are then forwarded to a second evaluation step, which is done by GPT-4 Mini, and this choice was, uh, work was done because of speed reasons. Uh, and this second evaluation step provides a correctness score from 1 to 10, and together with the help of a, uh, a threshold set a priori by users, uh, it is obtained uh, the final binary certification to be either positive or negative. And uh, now I'm going to show you the most important uh, numerical results for each one of the components. So the filter, other than having a very high consistency score, um, the, the, the most important metrics to be minimized here is the false positives, which represent, uh, in this case, that the filtered instances that should have not have been filtered. And this uh, stands at 6.5%, which is a fairly low number. Then we have the main evaluation step, which in this case uh, the number uh, only includes positive and negative uh, uh, 
five instances. And uh, it has a, a very high consistency, which is uh, one of the main perks of uh, Prometheus. But here, uh, the idea was not only to uh, minimize the false positive, which uh, is the main type of mistakes, uh, but also to, mini to minimize the kind of trade off with the total negative, which in this case represents the total workload that is forwarded to the human operator. So we want to find a balance between the two and not only minimize one of them. And finally, for the second step, uh, the second evaluation step, uh, uh, because of the, the presence of the threshold, the, the performance, uh, which, are, uh, which remains false positive and uh, uh, the operator revisions, uh, um, uh, depends on uh, which uh, value of the threshold is set between 1 and 10. And the threshold will not only uh, uh, affect the, the last uh, evaluation step, but, only the, but also the, the overall uh, performance of the system, that you can see at screen. And this threshold um, uh, is able to uh, easily tune the severity of the system uh, to match eventual uh, needs that the business might, might have. And with uh, assuming a threshold set to 7, the total overall performance of the system reached a 12% of false positive and a 27% 20, uh, of total negative, which more or less cut in, uh, in 4 uh, the, the workload uh, of, uh, that, that is forwarded to the human operators. Now let's move on to the second objective of the thesis, which was about uh, increasing the trustworthiness of the system. And trustworthiness is a word that uh, has been recently gaining a lot of uh, attention, especially after the publication of the Ethics Guidance for Trustworthy AI from the European Commission, which is a framework that uh, helps designers uh, to translate uh, uh, theoretical principles into uh, practical and uh, actionable requirements. But we first need to understand what trustworthiness is and how it uh, can be applied to technology in general and to AI in particular. To understand trustworthiness, we first need to understand what reliance is, which is a necessary condition. So reliance is uh, uh, to act on the supposition that a certain agent uh, will perform a certain action. So it's, it's kind of an expectation of a certain behavior. It can be either an agent, a human agent, or an object. And trustworthiness uh, has a less fully accepted uh, definition, but uh, it is thought to be uh, the pairing of reliance with some extra element. And the nature, the nature of this extra element uh, um, sees two predominant views, which is the one is the epistemic view that focuses uh, in particular on the performance of the system to infer rationally its uh, trustworthiness, <coughs> and the other one is the motivational view, which focuses more on the intention and the motivation of the, of the agent to infer its trustworthiness. While the first one sees a smooth applicability to artificial intelligence, and the latter one uh, not, uh, the, the motivational view uh, uh, draw a clear distinction between reliance and trustworthiness, a thing that uh, uh, the epistemic view lack of. Uh, and because of this reason, this, because of this reason the uh, motivational view has been chosen for and adopted for the, uh, for the rest of the thesis. Um, but the problem with the motivational view is that uh, it doesn't uh, fully apply to technology and to artificial intelligence. So why do this definition of the trustworthiness uh, motivational view clash with our uh, everyday uh, experience uh, about technology in general and uh, artificial intelligence? Because uh, we feel to be able to trust technology in general, not, uh, not especially artificial intelligence. And this is because of the social technical system, which is a system that uh, puts itself uh, in between uh, the, the user and the technology. Uh, and it's a system that is composed by uh, predominantly people, but also physical objects and uh, uh, entities, laws uh, and organization. Uh, and the, the system sees the consider the um, interaction, the social and technical interaction between these entities. And because of the system, of this social technical system, uh, we as users uh, feel a, a sense of trust towards technology that is not uh, in reality directed toward the, towards technology itself, but rather towards the social technical system, which is predominantly uh, constituted by, by people. And so uh, we see that uh, even though uh, at the uh, artifact level it's not uh, it's not applicable the notion of trustworthiness. Uh, at a, a social technical system level, it, it is possible to apply the, the notion of trustworthiness. And uh, at an article, uh, artifact level, it is not possible because, as John Sir would say, uh, today's technology is still just uh, a simple manipulation system, uh, with devoid of, uh, uh, of uh, features like intentionality, which characterize uh, the human brain. 
So we need to fall back to a uh, more uh, reasonable uh, notion of uh, a reliable technology and reliable uh, artificial intelligence because how we as a society we perceive technology shape the decision we make <coughs> for society as a whole. And thus, with the help of the uh, European uh, Ethics Guideline for Transport AI, uh, we have translated the, the seven requirements that uh, the Commission, the European Commission, have outlined. Uh, into a specific case of uh, uh, reliable uh, LLM as a judge uh, to understand which are the key points uh, that should, be, uh, should need to be addressed. <laughs> to conclude, uh, the thesis is so, uh, in the technical part, uh, application of a division of task approach to allow to isolate uh, three subtasks and uh, to address them with a specific uh, uh, component and specialized model. Uh, while in the philosophical part, uh, we see how reliable AI is a much more suitable uh, objective to aim at for, uh, especially for developers and, uh, and designers of uh, technology, technology and artificial intelligence, as uh, artificial intelligence uh, does seem to be just not anything more than just a very complex tool. And that the trust should uh, uh, instead be fostered towards uh, such a technical system, uh, towards, uh, to, towards the people of the such a technical system. Uh, that uh, uh, society should build around uh, artificial intelligence in the same way that uh, it has done in the previous century with the, the aviation system uh, and all the entities we have built around it. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, on the scores that to be done on a specific dataset. 